All right, welcome to the Taxonomy Vodcast with Miss Carr. Today we're going to be talking about taxonomy and what it is and kind of how it works within biology to help us um, name and classify organisms. Now, in general, we've talked about a little bit about how we categorize animals and plants and bacteria and how we use for example, dichotomous keys to put them into these categories. Now, what we're going to be looking at today is kind of what these categories are. This is going to be a relatively short podcast, but I do want to let you know that you do need to take notes on this because you need to know the levels of classification. So taxonomy is the study of naming and classifying organisms, and that is a definition that you do need to know. Okay, now what do we mean by classifying organisms? Well, classification is the method that we use to group or categorize organisms by biological type. And so we're actually using a classification system so that we can um, just categorize, put these organisms into a a subset of things that they have similar traits to. And we use a variety of different traits to do this categorizing and grouping. For example, we use DNA evidence. We use behavioral evidence occasionally. We certainly use physical evidence, physical similarities, um, traits. We are looking at muscle, skeletal structure, um, anatomy. We're looking at development and um, in, in addition to, to a number of other biological traits, for example, organs that you have in common, um, behaviors that you have in common, specifically like feeding behaviors, for example. So there's a number of reasons that we do classify um, things into different categories, but there's also different categories that we use to classify organisms. We have categories that are very, very large two very, very specific. And so we'll talk about each of those categories in turn. Okay. The first category that we use is domains and all living things are divided into only three domains. So every living thing on the planet will fit into one of these three categories. Okay. And these three categories are the domain eubacteria, the domain archaeobacteria, and the domain eukarya. And we're going to talk about how we can tell what of these three categories that organisms fall into. Now you'll notice something about the domain eubacteria over here. The domain eubacteria only contains one kingdom, also called eubacteria. And the domain archaeobacteria also contains only one kingdom, archaeobacteria. Now these are called mono kingdom domains. There's only one kingdom in each of these domains. And you'll notice that eukarya is actually divided into many, and we'll get into that in, in just a moment. But just keep in mind that eubacteria and archaeobacteria are, um, they're not smaller groups, they're actually much larger groups, but they only have one kingdom each. So if we take a look at the first domain, eubacteria, these are our true bacteria. They are prokaryotes, meaning they don't have a nucleus, and they're unicellular. You, they don't grow into multicellular organisms, and they have a cell wall that is made of a protein called peptidoglycan. This is a word that you do need to know, so make sure that you put it in your notes. So the eubacteria have a cell wall made of peptidoglycan. Um, you should know how to say that as well. Practice it if you need to. Okay. After the domain eubacteria, you have the domain archaeobacteria, which are actually, we believe, more archaic, which is thus the name. These are the first bacteria. These are extremophiles, meaning they love extreme temperatures, they love extreme um, salinity, they love acid environments, and they live in the most extreme environments on Earth. You have some that live on methane, you have some that live in very, very hot uh, thermal vents, and you have some that live in acid, um, and so you have these, they're called acidophiles, and they're very fantastic, amazing life forms that can exist in these extreme environments. They're also prokaryotes and they are unicellular. The problem with these guys is they lack that cell wall of peptidoglycan that separates them from the eubacteria, okay? 
And our third and final domain, and the most complex of the domains, are the eukaryotes. All eukaryotes have a membrane-bound organelles, and they have a nucleus that surrounds their DNA. And this is the domain eukarya. And of course, everything within this domain is called a eukaryote, right? So these are the three first classifications, the domains, okay? Now, each domain is divided into kingdoms. And as I said before, the archaeobacteria and the eubacteria are single kingdom domains. But eukarya is more complex. We have kingdom fungi, we have kingdom plantae, we have kingdom protista, kingdom animalia. And so we're going to talk about um, how our kingdoms are divided in a second. I'm going to review those kingdoms with you real quick because you do need to know. So we have animalia, protista, plantae, and fungi. Those are the, the five major kingdoms that you need to know. Okay. All right, so we have animalia, and we're going to take a look at how we separate the animals in the animal kingdom, for example. And each kingdom is divided into phyla, and phyla is the next division. So you go ki domain, kingdom, phylum, okay? And so, for example, with the animal kingdom is divided into nine primary Phyla, and that is Annelida, those are the segmented worms, Econodermata, those are like the starfish and the sea urchins, you have Nematoda, those are your round worms, Platyhelminthes, those are your flatworms, Arthropods, those are things with jointed limbs like crabs and insects, you have Chordata, those are the things with a chordate, uh, the, or with a notochord, uh, that's that includes us and all of their mammals. You have cnidarians, those are the jellyfish. You have periphera, those are the sponges. And I labeled nematodes twice, and I'm not sure why. There's a mistake here. Okay, I apologize for that. But these are your um, your large phylum divisions in the kingdom animalia. Now, I'm not going to ask you to uh, memorize or have to list all of these, but you will have a point during this unit, during this six weeks, where you will need to tell me an example of an organism from each of these phyla. So um, we will learn about more about these, but right now we're just focused on the fact that phyla are subdivisions of the kingdom. So the kingdom is broken into phyla. Okay, now we're going to take a closer look at phylum chordata. Um, it's a, a large phylum, but, but by no means the largest. It's just one that we have a particular interest in because it's where we are. And so the phylum chordata is divided into classes. So, so far we have domain, kingdom, phylum, and now class. So the phylum chordata, for example, is divided into six classes. That's chondrichthys, osteichthys, those are your sharks and your bony fishes, uh, respectively. Then you have your amphibians and your reptiles, your birds and your mammals. So I'm sure that you guys have probably learned about all of these six classes of chordates. And they're the, they're the animals that we tend to spend the most of our time on because they're the ones that we have the most in common with. So, um, of course, that's each phylum is divided into classes. So um, now we're going to look at the class that is most near and dear to our hearts, of course, mammalia. This includes all of our mammals. And then if we look at the class, each class is divided into orders. So by way of review, we want to look. Domains are the biggest, divided into kingdoms, then phylums, and then phyla is the plural of phylum, phylum class, and then order, okay? And orders are an even more specific division. So if we look at mammals, mammals are divided into a huge number of orders. Um, everything from monotremes and marsupials, um, sirenia, those are your manatees, insectivora, that's an entire group that eats only insects, rodentia, those are all of your rats and rodents, you have primates and carnivores and whales and bats and ant eaters and rabbits. And so you have tons and tons of these small little um, orders that are divisions of the class mammalia. So um, 
we of course are going to continue looking at primate and if we continue to I'm sorry there was a problem with my Prezi there if we continue to look at our uh, primate order then we take a closer look and we see that our order is divided into families so each order is divided into these families and so we're only going to look at, at the primate family because looking at all of the other orders would be ridiculously complex. So if we look at this order divided into families, we see that the order of primates is divided into all of these subgroups, the lemurs and the various monkeys, and you have your various large apes over here. So we're going to look, of course, at the family hominidae. Now, the interesting thing about hominidae is there really is only one existing genus within that family. And so uh, we want to take a look at hominidae because we are that final genus. And so each family is divided into genera. That's the plural for the word genus. Okay, so genus or genera. So, so far we have the domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, and now genus. Okay, so each family is divided into genera or a genus. Now, there are gorillas, homo, which are humans, and pan, which is the chimpanzee, and pongo, which is the orangutan. So these are the higher order primates. These are the, the higher order apes. We would call these the great apes. And um, so if we take a look at our genus, for example, we see that um, our genus is Homo, and we only have one species that is left alive today, which is Homo sapiens. Now, remember that when you write a scientific name, you include the genus name first and the species name second. Your genus name must always be capitalized. Your species name can never be capitalized and it must be written together. You must have both genus and species names, and you can either write it in italics if you are typing or underline it if you're handwriting the genus and species name. So the species is the most specific, and that's why it's called the species, the most specific of our classifications, and there can only be one species with a certain scientific name. Now, what does that mean, a species? Now, a species is defined as any group of individuals that can breed and produce viable, meaning they can breed themselves, offspring. So, as long as two organisms can breed and produce a, a not sterile offspring, then they are considered the same species. So, um, that's a short um, introduction to taxonomy and our classification system in... Okay, and so if we take a look at our, our entire system here, I want you guys to really look at how incredibly complicated this web could be if you were to follow each one of these uh, branches off into its numerous branches. Now keep in mind here, that there's a ton of branches in this tree that we've made and we were only classifying a single organism here which was um, us as people so this is actually a very complex classification system but it allows us to group organisms based on their common traits their common characteristics and so that is a short overview of taxonomy and the system of classification that we use in biology.